Welcome to another episode of Social PR Secrets, the podcast. My name is Lisa Beyer, and I'll be your host. In this episode, I catch up with my good friend and colleague, Jabez Labret. In this episode, Jabez and I talk about LinkedIn for business and how it's more than just a place to hang your resume and network for a job. At the time of this interview, Jabez was an agency owner specializing in the legal industry. You wouldn't know it from this interview, but at one time, Jabez was homeless and that he is a high school dropout. At the time of this interview, Jabez owned an agency that specialized in the legal industry. Jabez has traveled the world as a keynote speaker, talking about subjects varying from social media, digital marketing, entrepreneurship, and more. Today, you can find Jabez as a writer for Forbes, and he has also followed his passion project where he has started a school called the Sisu Academy. It's a tuition-free all-girls boarding school located in California. Enjoy the interview and welcome Jabez. Okay, hi everybody. We're in week seven and this week we're focusing on LinkedIn and we have a special guest today. His name is Jabez Labray. Hi Jabez. What's going on Lisa? So he's coming, um, he's joining us all the way from San Francisco. Um, I invited Jabez because we speak together at um, a variety of different conferences, and one of Jabez's topics is LinkedIn. Um, Jabez also owns his own agency. I'll let him tell you a little, little bit more about that. He is also the author of a book right here, Online Law Practice Strategies, and like I said, he is the speaker. So Jabez, tell us a little bit more about yourself, and then we'll get into some Q&A. <sighs> Thanks, Lisa, uh, and thanks for having me, by the way, and uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, super excited here to uh, be talking about LinkedIn today. Um, as Lisa, Lisa mentioned, uh, I have the fortunate opportunity to get to speak alongside Lisa. Uh, she always makes uh, uh, everybody else in the room look so much smarter, so it's always nice uh, to have her around. But I'm excited to be here today. Uh, my agency, uh, Get Notice, Get Found, gngf.com, uh, we run uh, uh, digital marketing strategies for law firms. And so we work specifically in the legal industry. Uh, I didn't always work just in the legal industry, so that's kind of a new thing for me. Uh, the last four years, we've been legal only, but I still get a chance to go uh, speak at these events and do trainings with uh, big companies like IBM and Hewlett Packard and uh, go speak at events like PubCon and uh, all sorts of different events um, uh, about technology and kind of the intersection of technology marketing and, and sales and kind of how it all comes together. Okay, awesome. So as we're segueing into the Q&A, I just want to bring to the attention, I'll do a screen share, that you wrote a very inter interesting article that was published on LinkedIn about you breaking up with Facebook. So I'm going to do a screen share here and um, scroll down to that actual article. So tell us about that article and um, then we'll switch back to talking about LinkedIn. You know, this is my first uh, published piece on LinkedIn's publishing network. Um, they've opened up their publishing network to uh, basically anybody. You, you still have to go and apply for it. Uh, you have to give them your name and email address and apply for it. Uh, I kind of uh, wrote a, a funny, I made a decision about three weeks ago that I was kind of fed up with Facebook. I'm pretty much done with the way that they're running testing on the users and I decided I was going to leave and I thought what a good place to publish an open letter to Facebook saying I'm out of here, we're breaking up then on LinkedIn. Um, and it, it's interesting, this one piece here, uh, what I think is most fascinating, it, you know, it only got almost 4,000 views, which is pretty good. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really uh, upset with that at all. Um, it, I wouldn't say it got shared crazy amounts. As a percentage, it looked like it got shared okay, um, you know, probably running about 400 shares. So about 10% uh, uh, shares is, is not a bad uh, click through there. Uh, but interestingly, I, I garnered about 2,000, like 900 and some followers on LinkedIn. So I had two followers, basically, two people that were quote unquote following me. Those weren't people that were connected to me. Those were people that are specifically following updates that you create on LinkedIn. And after this one article, um, I was shocked that that's like three quarters or 75 percent of the people who read the article followed me on LinkedIn. And I think that's just, that, that, that blew me away. I, I didn't expect to see that happen. Um, and I don't know what the you know, benefits and results of that are going to be, but, uh, you know, I'll let you know as I find out more, uh, maybe, you know, maybe before this thing hits um, live here uh, with the with the class, I'll, I'll have a little bit more information for you. Okay, great. So, um, and then just to point out that this was actually something that you published within your personal LinkedIn profile, 
and um, in your views on Facebook as far as leaving Facebook are more from a personal standpoint from a brand standpoint and a business standpoint do you still support businesses and brands using Facebook to, for marketing I do. Interestingly, that got brought up. The comments were kind of funny. Some people took offense to the fact that I said I was leaving Facebook uh, because I don't like them anymore. Um, I, and it's not that I think other people should leave Facebook. It's not that I, and I certainly don't think businesses should. Um, if nothing else, uh, the articles about how Facebook is starting to lean more towards businesses and less towards users. So if, if anything else, I think businesses should double down on Facebook advertising and engagement now more than they ever have before. Uh, primarily because Facebook's giving priority, um, you know, to, to ad space, and that's that's a good thing for business. Uh, it just wasn't what I wanted to see in my newsfeed. Okay, makes sense. So back to LinkedIn. So what can you share with um, our future social media managers that are that are watching this interview? What can you share with them about the advantages of using LinkedIn, both personally and from a business standpoint? You know, it's interesting. LinkedIn is like the redheaded. Well, I'm not going to say it. It, it, it. It's it's the place where nobody goes. They like they think it's this resume. They think it's just this static place where either I go there if I'm looking for a job, or I just post my my resume up there and I connect with some other business professionals on there, and that's about it. And I think the key is that LinkedIn still is predominantly a professionals network. It's uh, business people. It's uh, you know it's financial analysts. It's you know it's it's, it's marketing people. It's it's PR people. It's um, you know, bankers, it's, it's every kind of business person that you could possibly imagine is on LinkedIn and has had a profile probably for a long time as somewhere where they used to put their resume. Well, as social media managers, there's this huge opportunity to capitalize on the fact that all of these other professionals are in this network. Uh, the network has the highest amount of annual uh, income per user, so it is by far the richest network as far as users are concerned. And I don't know about you, but when I'm looking at trying to build a, a company or a business or, or get a product out there, I need people who can afford to buy it, even if it's a $2 widget. Uh, LinkedIn is where those people are hanging out, and so you need to get smart and tactical about strategically putting yourself in front of your prospects, your vendors, your strategic partners. All of those people are on LinkedIn. Um, and, and so it, it really is an opportunity to get out there in a, a place where I don't think that a lot of people are right now. I, I think it's still an underutilized network. So I'm going to just do a screen share right now and show your um, your company page for your agency, GNGF. And um, if you can just tell us, um, kind of walk us through and share how as an agency, as a business, you're using LinkedIn and um, just in general what businesses can do with the company page. Yeah, so uh, we use LinkedIn uh, primarily to support our other online platforms and so there's lots of different ways that you can consider using your company page uh, for LinkedIn so you have brands where people go to get information so brand might be like uh, uh, Kraft or Tide or Coca-Cola or Pepsi those are places where people are going to to maybe get broader company-wide information then you've got really smaller companies so we're kind of a you know we're a small agency we have 22 employees um, and so for us, LinkedIn's a place to just kind of provide some more information, use it as a, a backbone. Maybe you missed our blog posts, so we're going to put our blog post here as well uh, in our update section. Maybe you, you know, maybe you want to learn a bit, little bit more about our employees. It's not hard to have all of our employees listed on there, um, even though I did notice when you brought this up that we are missing an employee on there somehow, uh, which is ironic and embarrassing. Uh, but you know, you go through here, and, and, and it's really, for us, it's a place where if our clientele wants to go and just kind of check us out, this place supports our brand image just like it does everywhere else. For companies that are in the middle there between really major, major brands and really, really small brands, your company page is a place for you to get search engine benefit. LinkedIn ranks really well, and so you can optimize this company page in your uh, profile description, hours of operation, uh, categories and keywords, uh, you know, geolocation information of your, your store if you have a, an actual brick and mortar location, um, website URL, and LinkedIn will rank really well in the search engines. And so it's another place for you to get control of, of page one of Google of, on your name, on your branded searches, so people that are looking for your name. Um, LinkedIn also has product pages. And so our company being a service company, we don't have the product page turned on because we don't have products in the traditional sense. 
Uh, but if you do sell widgets, um, you know, or, or whatever, you know, like you sell bags or something, and you want to list your bags, you can put your your bags on there individually in the product pages. Um, and it is again another place for you to engage that clientele. Um, you know, we talk about your brand as an API. Um, you know, basically meaning that the user is going to interact with your brand or you where they want to interact with you online. It's not necessarily going to be your decision whether that's they're going to go to your website, they're going to go to your Facebook, they're going to go to your LinkedIn or your Twitter. They're going to go where they want to go. So are you providing, an, and I think take advantage, taking advantage of all the opportunities you can to create a transaction, the right transaction in each individual environment. And you know the LinkedIn company page is the place to do that. Um, and the images have changed, the size of the layouts have changed, and so if you haven't checked your LinkedIn company page in a while, um, the layouts changed quite a bit. So that was actually that. Um, one of the things that I went over that in the week we're going to be talking about mobile is social media networks and how they're being displayed to the mobile user. So the visuals as far as the cover image and the profile image, it looks like you guys are doing a great job at that. Um, making sure that it's very visual, but what about groups? I'm just trying to find the area where it shows groups with each. I know that you, yeah. Jabez, talk a lot about the advantages of being part of groups. I'm a big uh, fan of the groups. Um, there's the group, my groups right there um, that I'm, I'm in, and uh, you know, I, you, you can be in 50 groups total. I don't think that it's necessary to be in 50 groups. Um, you know, groups are really basically anywhere that people want to go and have a discussion. And those groups range from golfing groups to travel groups to, you know, all the lawyers there. The AVB01 in the upper left corner is a group of lawyers that talk about marketing for law. The CXO group is a group of executives for companies. And uh, so you'll, you'll notice, you know, you want to have a mix of different kinds of groups that you're involved with. I, I always try to steer people towards, you know, join groups where your prospects are. So go, go, go find groups where the, your clientele are hanging out and then go get active in discussions in those groups. Um, you know, it's a great way to get yourself in front of your clientele. Um, and then what about personally? So um, if, if you're building up your personal LinkedIn profile um, before you, let's say you're graduating or you're going to be looking for a job as a social media manager, what advice can you give um, to the future graduates when it comes to that, building up your personal LinkedIn profile? Well, um, if we're going to stick on groups first, uh, you certainly should be joining some groups of companies you'd like to work at and get involved and active in the discussions within that group uh, because that's going to get you in front of those hiring managers and that's really important. But everything does boil down to your profile and so if your profile is not buttoned up then that means that you're, you're missing when people try to look for you or they go to find you it looks incomplete or doesn't look like it's, it's properly um, uh, I think set up, it looks lazy. A couple of things. Um, they just recently are rolling out this new large background image. And so you'll see I've got the GNGF uh, logo there uh, in the background. I need to kind of resize the logo to fit their specific dimensions. Um, and, and I haven't quite figured out how I want our logo to display. But if you don't have a logo, if you don't have any image back there, it just shows up as a big blue, um, a big blue bar. So you don't need to actually type in your name. If you go... Um, over to the left side where it says profile and then you click on view my profile oh there you go um, so you'll see that it's got that blue background I think I updated mine no there we go but again there I needed goes. to see and so you're, you're but you know that's okay I'd rather have an image there that's a little bit kind of not scaled right than have no image there at all um, you know the the blue background is is pretty ugly um, and, and it looks like you're kind of missing um, like you just haven't touched it in a while. So you got to look at that background image. Your photo needs to be a headshot. Now, not a professional headshot that you would get for like a, a acting job, but I mean it needs to be some sort of like um, good, professionally kind of professional looking picture of your head. It should be, you know, just below the shoulders is, is as far down as you want to go. Um, it shouldn't be you with your arm around somebody else. It shouldn't be you lounging in a chair. It shouldn't be you with your cats. It shouldn't be you on the beach. It should be just you standing in front of a wall, or I don't care what you're standing in front of, making a nice, clean, simple picture um, so that people can see your face because the picture is really big on your profile, but notice the thumbnails on the right-hand side. Those thumbnails, that's the size that your photo ends up looking like as, as you go around most of and navigate around most of LinkedIn. So 
if that photo isn't mostly your face, then it, it doesn't scale well when it comes down to a, a thumbnail size. So that's really important. Your headline's important. Those are the words that appear just below your name. And so mine reads uh, CIO, uh, Simplifying the Complex Advanced Marketing Strategies and Campaigns, Coffee Lover and Contributor at NBC and Forbes. Um, I've packed a lot in there uh, for very important reasons. This, this headline travels with you, so it, it follows you around. When someone uh, sees your profile show up on their, their screen in a discussion in a group or as a suggested person they should connect with or a comment you made somewhere, the, the headline often goes with you. And so it will say Jabez LeBret and then read my entire headline below it. Uh, this is my opportunity to get to tell you something. It's my first marketing touch point. Um, for me, I give title. I give some sort of idea of what I do. Simplifying the complex, advanced marketing strategies and campaigns. Boom. I told you how I operate and what I do. I simplify complex issues and I deal in advanced marketing strategies and campaigns. But then I want to give you something personal. Uh, coffee lover. I, am a, I love coffee. I drink uh, too much coffee, and so I added that in there. It's a little kind of like get to know me piece, and then contributor at NBC and Forbes is my way of, of validating myself. Now, if you're just graduating from college, you don't have all of these things necessarily to get to add in there. You don't probably write for you know media. You might if you do, that's awesome. Uh, but you do have some things that you've done, and some things that build credibility. And so think about accomplishments that you've had, and whether that was, uh, you know, finished first in, in, you know, a business planning competition, or, you know, anything that can say, hey, I got some chops, you know, like I was voted best intern at this, or, or in this organization, or I completed this, you know, uh, really heavy in, involved co-op at this company. Don't be afraid to put that in your headline um, to give people an idea of what it is that you're capable of doing. Um, then it's a matter of making sure that everything is completed in your profile. And so as you scroll down, it goes to summary. Um, you don't have to have published any posts that will only show up if you've published anything. Um, background is your summary area. You get to write that um, yourself. It should be in third person. So if you write that in third person, it's a lot easier to brag about yourself. Um, you sound kind of like an a-hole if you talk about how awesome you are in first person. But if you talk about how awesome you are in third person, suddenly it sounds like someone else is talking about you. Good point. And so, yeah, and so that makes it a little easier to brag. And, and this is the place for you to brag. You need to brag here because this is the point where if they scroll all the way down to your summary and they're reading that, then you need to get them hook, line, and sinker. Um, and then you've got your, you know, if you've written any books down the road, you could have publications that are there. Um, you have skills and endorsements. It would be a good idea to... To get those skills and endorsements, you know, if you can, some of them clicked off so that your, you know, your friends should be endorsing you. I just endorsed you. Oh, th oh thanks, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, skills and endorsements doesn't do much for you, but visually it looks nice uh, to have people endorse you for stuff. And then you need some recommendations. And so, you know, you have to reach out to, and you can, in the recommendation area, you can request recommendations from connections. And so you need to reach out to your connections and ask them to please endorse you um, and give you a recommendation on LinkedIn. And that's a typed out kind of like a letter of recommendation, if you will. And you want at least five of those. So your, your goal is to have five recommendations total, minimum. For your recommendations, so here they are. They're all the way down at the bottom. Yeah. There we go. So I don't know. I've got a, a, probably too many recommendations on there, but it happens over time, right? And so if you're on LinkedIn for a long time, you're going to end up with more and more recommendations um, as time goes on. Okay, great. So what are, um, what are, if you can think of, let's say, the first five things that future so social media managers can do right now, whether um, we talked a lot about personal profile, but what are maybe some mistakes that they're making or what, can, um, which, what do they need to know if they're going to be managing a company profile page, like let's say, you know, the, their first job out of school or maybe it's a part-time job now, they're on the front lines of managing um, for LinkedIn. What, what are some recommendations, some tips that you can give? Um, yeah, so a, a, a couple of mistakes that I find is that people don't button up like the company executives and, and people's LinkedIn profiles. And so if you're working at a company as a, a you know social media manager or, or in the marketing department and your social media falls under your uh, you know control, you need to make sure that the people who are at the top of the company, that their LinkedIn profiles are buttoned up too. 
uh, because that's a lot of people are going to go looking for those people online and they're going to find them on LinkedIn and it's your responsibility to bring to their attention that those things need to be addressed and I always say come with solutions don't just come with problems and so you know when it comes to anything uh, don't approach it with a you know hey here's something I found out that's broken uh, it's much better for me if my employee comes to me and says, hey, I found something that's broken and here's three ideas that I have for how to fix it. Uh, way, way, way better. And I'm more likely to give the project to you and let you go run with it uh, if that's the case. Um, and so make sure that their profiles are really good. Um, another kind of, I think, mistake that I see happen a lot is that people don't take the time to thoroughly go through every part of LinkedIn and make sure it's all optimized and buttoned up and properly written and the copywriting's current and the information's current and timely and it's kind of a pain and I get it uh, it's not sexy it's not fun but do make sure that all the company information is correct all the right executives are connected to the company profile you know you just go through and be methodical about it um, next you want to make sure that you go in uh, and, and probably look at your your social media um, best practices or guidelines internally as a company and see what they talk if they do they talk about LinkedIn at all is there even a best practice social media guideline at all yet? Has it even been written? Best practices for the company? If it has, what does it talk about LinkedIn and, and how does it approach LinkedIn as a topic? And you need to make sure that you list in there all the components that are important for people to know what matters about LinkedIn. And you got to sell people on it. I think a mistake I see a lot is that somebody says, you know, we were in a meeting a while ago at our company and they're like, oh my gosh, we're going to go do this social network over here that's new because it's flashy and new and neat and we're going to like throw all this stuff at it. And I said, well, why? Like, you better know why we're going to do something instead of just because we can. And so when it comes to LinkedIn, you've got a lot of opportunity here to say the reason that LinkedIn's so important is because our client base who has money and our vendors and our strategic partners are all on LinkedIn right now. And so we need to make sure that we are presenting as professional of an image as possible to all of these important key decision makers and, and prospects and everyone else. Uh, use that kind of language in selling it over and over and over because otherwise people get busy and they don't want to do it. Um, definitely make sure that you're getting, you're participating in groups. And uh, a, a common mistake I see is people jump into a group and then they kind of get busy and walk away for a minute. If you get involved in a discussion in a group and people are commenting back, back and forth, you have to stay engaged. The, you know how it is in social media. There is no, I'll get to it tomorrow. It, it really is a like, if you decide to roll out a campaign, schedule some time throughout your day to manage that campaign on LinkedIn. If you're going to write an article and you're going to publish an article on LinkedIn, I set aside 30-minute chunks throughout the day, that day and the next day, to specifically go in and comment on the article, share the article, and then see who else had shared the article and thank them for sharing my article. I scheduled that into my calendar so that I had the time to go do it. And I think that's a mistake that I see people make a lot is they don't plan the follow through. They just throw the spaghetti at the wall. Um, and I think that you can make your campaigns a lot more effective, uh, especially publishing. And that would be the last opportunity and the biggest opportunity I'm seeing right now is going to be the LinkedIn publishing platform. Um, as far as getting reach, getting in, being an early adopter, and getting your company out in front. Um, as of now, brands cannot publish yet. So a brand isn't able to publish an article. It has to be an individual at the brand. But, you know, that's how you should be interacting in some of these networks anyway. It should be, you know, Lisa Beyer at, you know, Lisa Beyer, you know, Lisa Beyer, what is the name of your actual company? The Beyer Group. <laughs> the Beyer Group, that's right. So Lisa Beyer at the Beyer Group your intern, you know, at the buyer group. And it's, it's okay to, to start it off that way and to say who you are and who you're representing. Awesome. Um, okay, Jabez, I think we're about out of time, but the, this has been uh, oh. incredible, incredible information that you've shared. If you have any last tips, um, go for it. What last words of wisdom do you have? Uh, don't say in your headline that you're looking for a job. And don't, in fact, don't ever tell people you're looking for a job. Just say that you're in between opportunities. Uh, fix your profile picture. Make sure it's professional. I hate unprofessional profile pictures. It drives me absolutely crazy. Um, and then make sure that you have actual contact information in LinkedIn where that person can reach out and connect with you um, because that, that is important. They may not connect with you on LinkedIn, but they may want to reach out to you through email or uh, through your website or, or whatever that might be. 
Okay, and then last but not least, where can we connect with you easiest? Where would you like us to connect with you on social LinkedIn. media? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Of course. Okay. No, uh, well, I'm not on Facebook anymore, so that's that's a, a not an option. Um, no, I, LinkedIn is probably the best, or Twitter. Um, you know, Jabez Labrette is not a common name, and so you'll you'll find me online pretty quick. Uh, but yeah, no, do connect with me on LinkedIn, and especially you know your whole class should. And and I you know I try to keep up on making the right changes as fast as possible. And so if something does change in LinkedIn and you're connected to me, you'll see that I made an update on my profile. Check it out. See, because maybe something LinkedIn changed something and they added it. And uh, it's a good way for, for you know your students to be able to stay on top of it without having to stay researched on it all the time. Awesome. Okay, Jabez, thank you so much. Stay, stay there for one second, but I'm cool. going to um, stop the broadcast. Thank Thanks, you. Everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Social PR Secrets. If you like what you heard, check out the book on Amazon or follow our blog at socialprsecrets.com. This episode was sponsored by The Buyer Group, a social PR agency striving to keep our balance in the digital world, practicing public relations, social media, and search marketing, while occasionally drinking a glass of wine or two for the best creativity and results. Thank you all for tuning in. If you would like to get a free chapter of Social PR Secrets, go to socialprsecrets.com slash free.